Hello bookworms and welcome to 2018. 2017 was kind of wild. And there's no way of saying it any other way. 2017 was wild. Um, but now that it is 2018, I get to go through my 2017 favorites. So what I'm going to do is give you a rundown of how many books I read um, and what were my top picks of 2017. So I've got my list pulled up over here in front of me, and we're just going to start. So my 2017 reading challenge was to read 60 books. The year before, I read 54 books, so I thought this wouldn't be too difficult to achieve, but life got in the way a lot in 2017, and I didn't get to read as much as I wanted to. So I only read 46 of the 60 books that I wanted to read. Um, right near the end of 2017, I was reading like five different books at a time, trying to get them all finished, but I don't think I finished them. I'm currently filming this, pre-filming this, and as of right now, I haven't finished. Do I think I'm going to finish the 15 books I need to finish by Sunday? Nah, maybe one or two, but as of this moment, I've read 46 books. Um, and out of those 46 books, I want to say that... Good portion of them were five stars. 15. 18 books for five stars. So we're gonna go through them. So I read 46 books. I had two books that I DNF'd. Technically three, but one I went back and finished. So the three books that I DNF'd were The Elven Tales by The Elven Tales, The Company of the Rose by Fabi Gitoni. I don't actually know how to pronounce her name. She is an Argentinian. Um, indie author who uh, gave me the free ebook to review and sadly I could not get through it it just wasn't my style um, so that was a book that I DNF'd other book that I DNF'd was the girl with the dragon tattoo I just found it incredibly slow and could not get through it so I DNF'd that uh, the other book that I DNF'd that went back and I went and finished was all the light we cannot see by Andy Weir? No, Anthony Dior. Dior. Anthony Dior? Dior? Something like that. I don't know how to pronounce some of these authors' names. Um, so that was one other one that I DNF'd, and then, but I came back and finished that one. The book that I read that had the lowest rating that I went through and I finished was Evelina by Fanny Burney. Um, it was a book in a series of letters, and I was reading it for class and I just did not find it that entertaining for the class that I was in. Um, but I had to read it for class so I could discuss it in class. And I did. Didn't like it though. So that was my lowest rating. So what were some of my favorite books? Now that I've gotten those out of the way. I'm going to save my favorite favorite book for last. But some of my top picks were some of my classic favorites, like Dracula. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you would have seen me posting a lot about Dracula in the month of November, like right near the end in early December, because I decided to switch my thesis, part of my thesis, where we had to write an analytical portion, and write it on the structure of Dracula. So I was rereading Dracula several times and researching it and trying to find stuff. So I reread that. Reread. Dracula. And of course, as it is my favorite book, it got another five stars. Um, I've lost track of how many times I've read Dracula, but Goodreads says it's like four or five, so, you know. Um, another one of my favorites for the year was a book that I had been wanting to read for a long time, but had not, and that is The Perks of Being a Wallflower. I found this to be a beautiful story, full of life and character, and it was amazing. Um, a YA book that I really enjoyed was the last book in the Finishing School series by Gail Carriger, and that was the Manners and Mutiny, which is the fourth book in the Finishing Girls series, uh, or Finishing School series. The first book is Etiquette and Espionage. And I found that as the books progressed, they got 
older, as the characters grew older, the plot line became more mature and I was able to enjoy it more. So I did give that last book in the series five stars. Um, what other series we had? A standalone book that we had was The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This was a book I picked up on a whim. It is a historical fiction um, set in France. Um, and it balances the life of two sisters, two point of views between these two sisters, one of which is a rebel in the resistance, and the other is living at home with her child, a Jewish child that she has taken in, and a Nazi officer is billeted in her home. It is their point of views and their story as they live throughout it, as well as the point of view in the future of one of the two girls, but you don't know which one it is until the very end. Um, as she goes back to France to speak at a gala. So that was beautiful and haunting and awful in its context, but beautifully written and moving and just gorgeous. It put me into a massive reading slump. And um, that was when I tried to read All the Light We Cannot See afterward, and I just, I was just in such a slump that there was no way I could pick it up after. Um, so thus I waited a couple months until last month, actually, uh, November, and I finished it. That's that row, right? Yes. So another series that I was reading that hit me pretty good was I read for the first time the Raven Boys series by Maggie Steve Otter. And so two of the books in the series that I thought were five stars were the first two books in the series, The Raven Boys and The Dream Thieves. The Raven Boys is a series of books about uh, three boys and one girl. So you've got Gansey, Adam, Ronan, Noah, who is a ghost, and Blue. And they are trying to find the uh, a Welsh king named Glendower so he can grant them a wish. Uh, which is the legend, and they've tracked him down, Gansey has tracked him down to Henrietta, Virginia. So it's their story from hunting down this Welsh king, the body of this Welsh king. So I found the first two books really interesting, interesting and fascinating for me. Um, I didn't actually know what the book was about going into it, which was one surprising for being on book two. Like I didn't know what it was. Um, I thought it was um, high fantasy versus more urban paranormal-esque suspense. It's, I have to double check what genre it actually fits under because it's real genre-bending to me. Um, another series that really hit me, so I always love his work, is Clive Klesler, his book The Thief, which is the third book the fifth book in the Isaac Bell series, and Isaac Bell is a detective in early 1900s, like 1915, right around the start of World War I. And this one was a thief that was trying to steal a design plan for the first moving picture with sound, because at this time, films were just silent films. Um, but this was the plans to incorporate sound into it. And there's all these government conspiracies all working together. It's very political and action-y and anything you would want from a Clive Klesler book. Um, for poetry this year, I... Yes, okay. Um, next one is actually not over here. No. Is it? No, it used to be over here, but it's not over here now. It is Milk and Honey by Ruby Core. Uh, I rated the first book, her first chat book, five stars. It was beautiful. I'm not a poetry human, but I love Ruby Core. And her first book hit me like a bag of stones. And I read the entire book in one day. Like, I just sat in the sun and just read the book all day. It was freaking beautiful. <sighs> what else do I got for ya? Oh, I rated, uh, so The Court of Thorns and Roses, I read finished book one on New Year's Day last year. So technically I read it in 2016, but I finished it in 2017. So it is on here. That was five stars. Um, Court of Mist and Fury was even farther above that. 
just because it was Quark Mist and Fury and it was beautiful and I had a few weird moments where I was reading it at rehearsal on my tablet and people were coming over my shoulder and like what are you reading and they happened to come over during the sex scenes. It was kind of awkward but aside from that I had no complaints with the books and that was just me reading them at the wrong time. But it was beautiful and I definitely need to go back and reread it. I have the first book and the third book, um, Court of Wings and Ruin, which is over here, um, but I don't have the second book. I need to get that. Um, but I'm definitely going to be rereading those at some point, hopefully in 2018. Maybe before the novella comes out, if I feel like reading those thousand pages before the novella comes out. Um, so those are those three. Um, what else? What are, what's hiding under there? Did that one. Um, one book, I have the second book over there. I need to read it. It's desperately waiting so I can just sit down and read it all at once. I might just have to start it and just go from there. It is Three Dark Crowns. Three Dark Crowns is freaking amazing. I feel like for me, it rated up there with the unique beauty of it with A Court of Mist and Fury. I know, that's a lot to say. But for me, it was gorgeous. I listened to the audiobook and the reader just portrayed the characters in such a way that it was just... I listened to it back and forth on the way to New York City and I probably read, listened to the book in two days because I was just hooked on it. I remember just laying in the middle of my floor in my dorm room. We're not supposed to be cleaning. Just laying there listening. Productivity, right? The next author that I want to go through is Michael Scott. Um, if you go back through some of my videos, you'll see a video where I'm pretty much just sappy and sad and crying, almost crying. I don't think I officially actually started crying about Michael Scott, the author, the Irish author, not the guy from The Office, um, and about how his books have impacted me. I got to meet Michael Scott this year in May. Um, I have pictures somewhere in my memory card that I just need to upload somewhere. Um, but I've been reading Michael Scott's books since I was 10-ish, I want to say. Um, so I got to meet him this year, so I reread his entire series, um, and I had to give The Alchemist five stars because that was the one that got me into the series and really got me going. Um, the series that I'm talking about now that I've rambled on about Michael Scott is um, The Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Flamel. In this series is, there's two twins of prophecy that are, their powers are awakened by Nicholas Flamel. He takes them and they go to find it and there's a book called The Codex that the Dark Elders want to, they can pretty much take over the world and make sure that humanity is below the gods again. And everyone that you know from history is immortal. So you've got William Shakespeare, Machiavelli, um, Dr. John D, Virginia Dare, Nicholas and Paranel Flamel, like all of these people from European and Asian history, and there's all these gods and goddesses. There's Quetzalcoatl from Aztec, um, Bastet from Egyptian, like, you name it, they're in the series in some place. So it was really beautiful and really well researched, so I really love that series. Um, so that's the first book, and the next book that I had, um, rated five stars was one of his novellas, which is Billy the Kid and the Vampires of Vegas. Um, that's just when one of the characters, Billy the Kid, like the cowboy, goes to Vegas to get rid of someone that his elder has ordered him to and he runs into Skatek who is one of the other characters and they just run around Vegas pretty much killing vampires. It was pretty good. It sounds really corny but it's really good. It's only like 20 pages um, and it was really nice. Um, one book that I reread right at the beginning of the year and it was kind of too determine whether or not I wanted to continue the series. And the first book I love, really loved the first book, but after that kind of went downhill, 
and that is Witch and Wizard by James Patterson. Um, Witch and Wizard is a story about a brother and a sister who are a witch and a wizard. They find out that they have these powers and they're like, well, what do we do? And uh, this corporation that has taken over um, is trying to suppress all forms of magic even though they didn't know they had magic. Um, it's pretty much becoming a tol totalitarian society where it's the one who does this and the one that does that and they control everything in that aspect. So all these kids that have all these different things, like these powers and are able to see things are all getting pretty much rounded up and arrested. Um, I only read two book three or three, I believe. Um, and then the series kind of fell off for me. So I was rereading the first two books to see if I want to continue. And I didn't feel like continuing. Um, the last books that I want to talk about, one of which I read twice. Um, I read it once and then the second book was coming out so I read it again before it came out and then I read the second one is The Dog is Outside, The Dog is Coming to Visit. You wanna say hi? You wanna say hi? We're almost at the end of the video. Um, the last two books are Illuminae and Gemina by J. Christoph and Amy Kaufman. And I feel like hey, thank you. Like everyone knows about the series. It is um, a series about people on ships that are being attacked. Going down being attacked and AI is taking control and it's a mixed media format and I know I'm not explaining it well but I feel like a lot of people already know what it's about. Um, so the first book is about Katie and Ezra and how they're escaping their home planet which was attacked and the attack ship is still following them. They're on two separate ships and they're trying to communicate between the two ships um, and get rid of this, figure out what this disease is that's on the third ship. The second book is a completely different point of view with similar issues um, where people are taken over that shouldn't be taken over and people are badass and running around ships. The mixed media format is so interesting and cool and I love every second of it. Obsidio is like one of my top books for this year. I cannot wait for Obsidio to come out. I keep like just following Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff's uh, Instagram to see what they're posting because I want it. Oh, careful, coffee puppy. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. But I think I have to go take this puppy out, so leave it. Much, then all at once you were just enough You're just right, you're the perfect temp In my coffee cup, one of overslept You are complete, the final chord in the even beat You're the perfect rhyme, the perfect time Please can I make you mine?